So once again, for those of you coming in, this is kind of Cami 101 with a focus on ESS. Um, we I think we have mostly ESS teachers here. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But if you've got a question about anything, um, please feel free to drop it in the chat. I am Bonnie Chalette. I am a technology facilitator uh, with the East Baton Rouge Parish School System. If you need anything outside of this training, feel free to reach out to me, um, available by email, or if you're into the Edu Twitter yet. Um, if not, you should be. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. Um, and then um, I also have my website right underneath that, but I am always here to help if you need it. So um, if you're brand new to Cami, Cami is a really, really great uh, program that it, it, they have a free option and a pro option, but it allows you to take any in existing document, including PDFs, which are normally not editable, and write, draw, type, annotate, comment, um, and, and really bring it to life all within your browser. So um, Cami is continually advancing. Um, it is a rather, Consider all the things we in, in our district purchase is a newer program um, and they are constantly trying to evolve and keep up and be be more intuitive. Um, if you're but if I, our district purchased Cami the pro version for the whole district because schools were starting to purchase it on their own because they found it really useful. Um, so if you're, if like I said, if you're using already and you're a pro, we'll get there. We, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully I'll teach you some new things. If you're new, we're gonna get you on board. So um, there are now we have like a full array of tools. So you can use it as a whiteboard if you'd like. Um, you can share a document, um, code, like through all of your departments. Now, one question I commonly get from like ESS and admin is the signature block. Because we pay for um, the teacher plan, we have the access to signatures. There's a, there is a signature option. There is a problem is that it only is within our domain. So if you wanted a parent to sign a document, you share with them via Cami, they would have to be logged in as their child. So that might complicate things. Um, you might be able to work out a system that works for you. It is possible to get a signature. Um, via Cami, but the person would have to be logged in via our domain. So and, uh, we'll talk about other things, but I know that is probably the number one question I've gotten from ESS about Cami, um, but we're getting there um, and hopefully they'll find a solution to that. So right here, if you're thinking about the different ways you could use Cami, um, right, you know, kind of got you a nice little list here. The students can, you know, use it for collaboration. It does integrate directly with Google Classroom. Um, right now, like when you've got kids hybrid, you know, kids face-to-face -face and, and all this, like now you can have this one document, send it out, no printing required. Um, and if you've got some kind of curriculum, like I've worked a lot with the high schools and a lot of those curriculums are on PDF or if you've got some kind of image or anything like that, you want the students to be able to write on, but you don't, it, it's not a Google Doc, you can use Cami for that. Um, and th that's really, really great. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's dive in. You can launch Cami, just going to uh, web.camiapp.com. Now, I have the extension installed, the Google Chrome extension. Um, I have the link to the extension on the slide deck. Yeah, Miss Looney, that they, they can um, edit with the link. Just um, if you can get them to sign that way. But if you want to use that signature thing, it often asks them to um, be like in our domain. But thank you. Hey, Miss Looney, by the way, how are you? All right, so I have the extension installed and the extension is important because that's what makes it work with Google Classroom. Um, it's not necessarily required, but if you'd like to add the extension and I'm not sure, I know IT blocks um, a lot of things sometimes, but that that is the link right here to the extension. You can see it's right here, it's a little K. 
up in the screen. If you've got it installed and you can't see it, you can hit the puzzle piece and see I have quite a few extensions I, I rather I rather love. So um so there are two ways to start. So now we're gonna get started. Like I said, you can start with the extension or you can just launch and go straight to the browser. Um, right now, they are having this big training event I'm going to try to be at tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll be at school. Um, you know, or if we'll have power, we don't know, because I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of tired of living in these unprecedented times. I want things to just be normal. Um, but tomorrow, they are having a big event where they're going to talk about, you know, um, ways to use Cami and, and use it in your classroom and stuff. Um, Right here, this is where I start. This is the, the headquarters. I can see web, cameatsq.com. I am already logged in um, because if you don't have an account, cre you can create an account and go through EBR. I am already logged in because I use Cami a lot. And so I'm going to walk you through this screen. Also, remember when you log into Cami to make sure that you always um, choose like log in with Google. So I'll walk through it this way um, because it is connected to our domain. That's how you get access to those pro features. So you always want to make sure that you click log in with Google. Um, see, I'm going to hit sign in. If you don't have access to the pro features, I am the Cami person for the district. We rarely have problems. Um, but you see, it's, I hit sign in. And if it would ask me, I would hit sign in with Google. So make sure it's all connected feeding together. So I'm going to pause. Anybody have any questions about creating your account or anything about getting started? Oh my gosh, good. I got some uh, Miss, Miss Knight and then oh, Miss Meadows. I'm glad. Name is done. See you down there. Um, so let's go ahead and keep going. But if you've got any, all right, somebody raised their hand. I'm so glad. All right, uh, Vicki, what you got? How can I help? Can you hear me? I wanted to find yes. out, can you use this without using Google Classroom? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we, we can just log in to this app by accessing it through Google. Yes. When we log into Google Chrome. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, all right. So Lisa, how can you tell if you have a teacher plan? You're just, well, first of all, if you see the Google Classroom button, that's how you can tell. Also, if you see right up here, it should say EDU. And that means you have that education license. Rarely do I have issues with people not having that license, but if you do, I can't fix it. But um, it's, it's not common. All right, and so Rachel, yeah, we're gonna talk about how we can help our students with this for sure. I just wanted to get everybody um, signed in and then we can we can dive into how it can support your students. Um, Ms. Burton, do I have to log into Cami each time I get on? Um, no, I did not. Like, I just went straight and it just took me straight here. Um, I did not, Except, especially like if you add the extension, then you just click that, but no. All right, so let's dive in to get started. So I have my, hand, my um, Kimmy home screen. I have a lot of different options for how I can get started. Um, one, I can take a document that I already have saved in my Google Drive. Um, if you are a Microsoft person, I know most of us aren't. If you are a Microsoft person, or for some reason you've got something, you know, somebody shared it with you in your in your Microsoft account, can that is connected as well. Um, if you've got something saved directly on your computer, so I know, like I, I am in the Google cult. I tend to get caught up in, in Google Drive. But a lot of people have really good things saved on their computer. You can open that from here as well. Um, if you want to use it, um, with your, just go ahead and directly create an assignment with it. 
or you can even create a document within Cami. Um, so how to create classroom assessment, we're getting there. All right, so I'm gonna start, um, you can see right here, I have an OCR and a split and merge. Um, split and merge is really neat because it's gonna allow me to take a document um, and split it up. So say I have a curriculum, imagine that, and the district, um, the, yeah, the State Department has made a curriculum with graphic organizers in it, um, but it's all one big long PDF. My students are virtual, what can I do? Well, this is, this is a way to fix that. So I see I have my big drive button and I can do this multiple ways and we can, we can go back over it. Um, but all I have to do is load my document and then I have the ability um, to take out what I need and make it a separate document. Or if I have multiple documents I wanna put together, I can do it during split and merge mode. Like I said, I know I taught social studies and it was really unfortunate that the social studies curriculum was this one big book with all the um, graphic organizers mixed in. So it would have been great if I had Cami where I could have just drug out the different documents I needed and split it from all the fluff. Um, so you can see right here, I can split pages. Um, and then he gives me all kinds of options, like split every how many pages. So I can generate, I can put all the pages I want right here. I hit generate and it puts it in three different pages for me. That might not be the thing you use the most. I just, it was at the top. So I wanted to start there. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start, let's work with a document. Let's go ahead and see how we can support our students. I am gonna hit open from Google Drive and you guys can follow along and find any document um, in your Google Drive that you might wanna share with students. You see, it's gonna ask me to choose an account. I have far too many accounts. And it's gonna let me select my document. I'm gonna find a PDF just because that's the example um, I use a lot because that's something we can't edit. That's uh, that's always been a struggle for our teachers is like a lot of this stuff is in PDF um, and they can't share it with their students and allow them to collaborate. All right, so I use the Cami Handbook whenever I'm, I'm demoing it just so you know there is a Cami handbook that is super helpful. Um, I feel like their resources that they pushed out might help you as much as this training. Um, so right here, here's my handbook. And so now I'm on my main screen where I can make this document more accessible to my students, which is our goal, um, is accessibility. So right here on the left, I've got my main menu. If you cannot see that for some reason, you should look right at the bottom of these little arrows and uh, it pop it out. So I've got first, you know, I, I've got all of my pages here and you can see where I have, um, you know, played with this document in the past as, as part of the training. But um, lots of cool ways to really make this document come alive for my students. Um, you know, like to make the instructions stand out. Like I said, so feel free um, to, you know, pick a, a document if you want, and we can kind of work on that together, or you can just follow along with me. All right, so first, I got my select button, which is where I generally want to live. Um, you know, I, I generally keep it in select mode unless I know I need something else. Um, next, I'm gonna have my dictionary. Notice it gives me like different options for my select, but let's jump into the dictionary. All I have to do 
is my students and my students have access to all of these same tools. So if you share something to them in Cami, it will open up and they will have access to these tools. So right here, if I have dictionary highlighted, all I have to do is click on a word and it gives me that uh, the definition. Bam, step one. Um, erase the need for the uh, the dictionary, the, the hard dictionary, which I still love. But um, all I do is I click the word. All right. Now, text to speech, I know is a really common um, is a common accommodation our students have. So I have text to speech. I've got lots of different options here. Um, I have options for different voices. Um, now, they do, they even have like accents. It does sound like it's translating on it. There's a very heavy accent, but it's not necessarily translating. But I can pick a different accent, a different voice. And if I hit play and so now it's going to read out loud to my students. Um, in whatever language I choose, I mean, on whatever accent I choose, and they can also adjust the speed right here. So that text to speech is, you know, an immediate accommodation in any um, document that you're sharing out. It will read to them um, as long as it's words on the page. So if you've got any kind of assessment, it, it won't work like with, um, it has to be in Cami though. Um, you know, like it's not just going to read what's like any web page. It needs to be in Gammy. But if you've got assessments or things like that, or the students have those accommodations, this would be, you know, a, a, an alternative to Kurzweil if you're not familiar with Kurzweil or something like that, where you do, you know you need that text to speech. So, like I said, um, you can do it by sentence. You can put it on a loop. If they just click here, like if I just click on it right here, this is where it's going to start reading. Um, I can put it on a loop. And like I said, I think I have Samantha um, as my normal voice, but um, all right. So that, that's just getting started. Those are our first two big accommodations off the bat. Um, next, we commonly, you know, tell our students to mark up the text. Well, um, here I have I have a highlighter. Um, I sometimes this highlighter can be a lot. You have to like click and drag, kind of just right. Um, you can see right, and I, I'm having trouble. And I'm you know I'm on a decent computer, so sometimes I have the box highlighter that I like a little more because then I can, it just makes a box. Um, that's just a personal preference. Um, and if they don't like where they highlighted, there is always that fancy undo button. So if they, you know, if they're getting frustrated, they're like, that's not where I wanted it to go. Um, uh, you know, they do have an undo button, but I personally prefer the box highlighter just because I feel like I have a little bit more control, but that is a, that is a personal preference. Um, I can strike through text. Um, just by double clicking and I pick my color here. I have almost too many options with this. You know, I can I can select all this stuff and, and strike it through in pink. My underline, mm, I don't love the underline. I feel like it looks a lot like strike through, but it's gotten better. I take that back because it was way too high. So you have that underline and the students have a whole color palette. So if you have them highlighting in different colors or, you know, um, because I know t teachers have different ways of doing this and getting them to mark up the text. Um, they do have a color palette right here to the left. Right. Can it translate? Um, it cannot. It cannot. I want to say yes so bad, um, but it cannot. Um, you would have to, like, you could um, trans. Like, at first, when I was playing with the voice, I thought it was live translating, but it's not. Um, you'd have to, like, I don't, you know, translate it in Google Docs, and then it'll read in multiple languages, um, but it won't translate for you. All right, here's the big, the the thing I think that makes 
these documents come alive the most are all the different comment features. So say, look, if you have a math assignment or something you're giving your students, you know, and but they need additional support, um, you can use these comments to really reinforce what's on this page. And once again, the students have these tools as well. So if you share something with them, they can record their response. Um, or they can make their comments on your direction. Um, based on, you know, what you, your instructions. So first, my option is a text comment. If that is highlighted, see it's red, that's what I can do. And I just click and my little dot came up. Uh, and we don't even have to worry about name anymore because like now it's a file name, but um, I've got that there. Um, I can make that text comment. Also, once again, if your students are making comments on documents, they have access to voice typing as well. And all I did was hit that microphone and um, it turned the voice typing on. So within the comments, you still have those accessibility features. And like I said, students who use, who need voice typing, that is totally an option within Cami. All right. Um, the second type of comment is a voice comment. As soon as I click, it will start recording. That comment will stay here when I share this out to my students. And so you can see right there, there is my voice comment. The students can hear back. Um, or if they recorded something to share with you. Um, next is my video comment. So I have that highlighted. You see how it's spread. So I know that's what's going to happen. I'm at my house. I have a background with y'all. But, um, and so it's recording now. Um, you can see, and when I hit done, it's right there. And so if I want to, if I want to explain something to students, um, I can do it that way. Like if I if I need to do like a demo, um, and the last way, which I think is which is new and really cool, is a screen capture. So if I need to make a recording of how to do something, like a screen capture, I can do that within. If I need to like show them hey, this is how you do this math problem, they can have a little video built in on how to do it. And the same thing, the students can do that as well. They have access to all of these features. All right, I'm going to take a breath. Do you have any questions? Oh, thank you for answering that, Ms. Mosby. Comment box or text box? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like the text box is more um, meant for actual, like, for this. Like, the comment is, like, something additional to the paper. But um, I feel like the text box is meant if you really want to add to the document. If, does that make sense, uh, Mr. Meadows? I hope it does. Um, but like Mr. Meadows brought us to our next point, um, the text box. You can do students. So I've had to use this a lot whenever I get forms that are PDFs and I need to fill out. This is how you can add those text boxes to it and fill it out. Um, but when you have the text box, notice all of the features you have right here. It's a lot. It's a lot. You even have a nice little, um, like, if you need um, math symbols and things like that, that's all there. Um, you have all those, like, degrees. If we want to say it's zero degrees outside, um, I can do that right there. Uh, Ms. Bonnet, can I interrupt what you? What you got? Yes, absolutely. You can interrupt it. Uh how do you regulate the space between, uh, like if you're doing a text box, uh, how do you regulate the space between the lines? Mm, like like make it double space? Yeah, if you want just single space or double space or, uh, I don't know. Uh, this right here. Well, that's, oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is your font number. This okay. This should this is worded poorly. 
this is and this would be your line spacing because you can see it moves my my cursor oh, down. Oh, okay. I was I was getting confused between the. Uh, well, I get easily confused anyway. So I was confused between the font and yes. the, the line space. Okay. Oh. They can label that a little better. I think. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. So yeah, so you've got um, lots of text box options. I wouldn't even, but you also have those math symbols, which are super great. Um, and again, students have the uh, voice typing option. Um, and you can see it took out my ums and it corrected what I said. Um, so the voice type typing option is is great. So if you have students who have, you know, like recorded responses or anything like that, that would be an option as well. Um, is that voice typing built in um, on there? I know, like my daughter's school, when they use this, they um, the teachers will create the text boxes on wherever and share it out with those text boxes already there um but they often um like will put you know like an arrow or something like in the box to make sure the students know that's where to write um and also a good tip is to highlight the box in a different color yeah. so that the students see that's where they need to go exactly. perfect so like right here i could i can i can hit the exactly um yeah, because it, it doesn't have an outline yet. We need them to add that. I'm going to send them a letter. Um, but you see this this bucket fill feature, like just like you would see on sheets or anything. That was a great, great point. Um, you can fill it so the students will see, like, hey, type in the yellow boxes. Great, great, great point. So in, a, in essence, the students could click where it was yellow, hit the microphone, and state their answers. Right, um, and what, so they have a second place for the equation function. Um, so if you've got, you're my math people, I am not a math person, um, but my math people, if you've got some symbols you need added, you, it is built in right here. Um, You drag it. Yeah. Okay. You drag it over. Got it. I've never, I never played with the math symbols, but I didn't even know how to do it. So you would click it and then drag it over. Got it. Okay. Um. All right. You have a few more. What you got? Add something right quick. Also, uh, I found Cami to be a good tool for those. I don't know if you all are running across it, but I have a lot of students who like to turn in incomplete work. So when they see that I have marked on their sheet with Cami, they now know, oh, she's actually going over all of my work. So this kind of like cuts them out from that playing that game. Well, I did submit it and I had it right and the system did not save it. So Cami is a great tool for countering those kind of students. Yeah, Miss Pierre, you know all your students all their work. Yeah, no, I know Miss Pierre. Not not this school year. <laughs> not this school year. <laughs> what are you talking in about? Past. In the past, yes, but not this school year. <laughs> They're um, very lazy. Miss Bonnie, <laughs> we had a question earlier about how uh, Cami was losing items or losing work. Yes, I posted that in a uh, teacher. Cami for educators on Facebook. I, I posted mm -hmm. that question to them and somebody said, don't forget that uh, whenever a student puts in or has a Cami document automatically, they have a file that's for a Cami mm -hmm. and you can access that or they can go back there to pick up their work. If you've got students that work is disappearing, that they mm -hmm. can go to that file and it's saving it in that file through Google Docs. Okay. I, and so, I know where that folder is. We, we can kind of dive into all that. Yeah, that's just something um, that from, from earlier, I I did get an answer from that. So I thought I'd just throw it out since oh, she was talking you, about being you. able to see, you know, in, you know, us going through the, all of their work. Well, also, it's in that it's in that file as well. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's, and let's, let's get through. I mean, I guess I just, 
real quick and then we'll dive into all that stuff too and i am recording this so if anybody's like what we're gonna i'll, I'll have the recording as well um so i do have a drawing feature um right here um i get to pick my palette i was drawing in white which is no help um but i can i can draw right here so if you need students to um and this is it'll let you select like the um you know you might have students sketch something out real quick um or just highlight and put an arrow to it or you need to circle something really big um i taught the same students atmosphere and sometimes i would have to put like a big circle and be like go review this um, you've got an option for shapes and lines, an eraser, um, if you want to erase the whole shape. Um, and I can even add media. So if I want to add an image, add something I've already recorded, anything like that, um, add a YouTube video into this. Um, okay, so we're, that's not supported that. I have to go to the beta. I wouldn't do that. I'm not doing beta yet. I want, um, the IT guys coming at me saying, what are you teaching people? Well, they even have cute little stickers. You can, you know, tell the kids A+. Because the Cami, this is their little logo, this little dog. Um, and last is the signature thing. Like I said, um, I think Miss Looney said, if you share it and let people outside of the domain edit it, um, this is the, when you want to insert a signature. See, I drew it on my phone. Um, and I insert, that's when, I, how I can insert a signature on any kind of document that I have. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. And if you're trying to do that, um, get with me. If you're struggling, like get with me and we'll work it out, we'll figure it out. Um, you know how, I think there are different ways to get it done. All right, so those are all our features. Um, I can also find a lot of this uh, to the right see these three lines up by my initials um, I can see document properties um, I can also see right here other people who have edited it um, and I know I <laughs> I had a teacher once that was saying like her she could see these initials down here um, she had helped the student but now they wouldn't go away and that student had to make an, a co make a copy of what they had done to make it look like she wasn't on this document anymore. Um, you do have a hide comments option as well. Um, and if you hide them, you can restore them. But we can go ahead and jump into assignments. So because we, we pay for that, that extra version, um, we can create Cami assignments. I have a Google Classroom. Um, created of teachers that are very that that know that they are here in this group i need to add you miss here um to help me when i need to share assignments like this um so right here i just clicked those three lines and hit create cami um directions it's gonna allow i can i can turn all of the restrictions i can turn all of this stuff off or all on so if i don't want them to be able to do something I do have the ability to turn it off. Um, so if you're like, hey, the student is using this too much, or I want them to practice their typing, I can turn off uh, features when I create assignments. Um, right here, I can, and somebody was asking about can students all share on one copy. Um, see right here, when I create it, I can choose uh, students share one copy or students cannot edit. So I could make one collaborative document for my entire classroom um, um, I can select my points my due date um, put it under a topic I generally always you can put the links to open with Cami I always put more if I can if I can put an extra link into to avoid student error I do that is up to you and then there's a button right here that will also attach instructions for Cami to students um, so no excuses so now um, I hit my assign button. My computer is, is tired of me today. So it, my assignment is created. So let's go look at it, what it looks like in Google Classroom. Um, somebody asked if I could see um, how students submitted their work. If you're using Classroom, um, 
and they hit submit, it will uh, it will show you under student work. So right here, I can see my assignment. Um, open it and uh, open open the specific document with Cami. So right here, here is my student. Here's the assignment, and here are the extra instructions just to help them in case they get they say they don't know. Like my want my virtual kids. Okay. Yes, I totally will go back. Um, to create an assignment, I can either from the beginning from that main screen where it said create Google, or these three lines right here, and then create assignment. So there are two places, multiple places, and um, if you have the extension, and I hope I'm not some like being too extra, but um, if you have the extension, if I hit create, oh, it is right there as well. Um, so three places, lots of lots of different ways, and that is that is new. Um, I was so confused. That I'm not going to lie. I didn't know how to get this to show up at first. Because um, believe it or not, I'm hesitant to add extensions. And um, I couldn't understand why I wasn't there. But that is why. Um, you have to have the extension. But you don't need it. It's just another option. All right. So. All right, Ms. Mosby, I think I think I think I need to to tie. We need a partner. I need you to do a cami session with me. Getting all my um how to add the extension. Um, if the link is right here on this slide deck, I can drop it. Um, you'll just hit, click Add to Chrome. Yeah, I've got the link on the slide deck, but I'll go ahead and, and drop it in there. There are three that they have. Like, there's there are three different ones. I don't need all three. So I don't have all three, but you are welcome to try out all three. And here's the um, here's the link for that extension. If it says blocked, put it on help desk ticket. Our IT guys, they, they, are, they are all for our security, even if it means a lot of tickets. All right, so let's go into what Ms. Knight was talking about with students. Um, with two things. First, we were talking about disappearing student work, and then we were talking about how to mark on students' work once they submitted it, correct? Um, I would, let's go into classroom. Um, so if a student has uh, submitted something to you, you will have edit access if it's your assignment, and then you can go on and comment on there. Like I said, I love the stickers. Anything that'll like save me some mouse clicks. And let me see if my fake classroom, if anybody has. Um, so I would be able to see here when they submitted it, I would see their submitted work. And then I could go in, this is her file, and I can mark it up. And see right here, it says grade with Cami. So it would let me go in and, like I said, do all the stickers and stuff. Is that helpful? They would turn it in um, just like any other assignment. Um, they would hit submit once they finished it. It's going to look the same. And all those instructions, if they're confused, um, also are, would be attached to the assignment um, right here. So it's got um, the instructions every time. Like I said, I would attach those, I would be so obnoxious. Um, and attach that so it goes into like right here, how you do it. 
it says turn in, you know, this is in here's a video, um, a step by step. So like students, no excuses. <laughs> it tells you exactly how to every time. Walks them through it. But yeah, there's a turn in a button. Right, right, Ms. Absher, right. Um, I really think, you know, like I don't suggest using every tech tool in the whole world every day. Um, like pick one you like and use that one and use it well. Um, like I like Flipgrid, but like, you know, just be consistent. So um, if there isn't a turn it in button on like Cami, um, if they're having an issue misdone, they could submit, like they can send you the link to it. Um, so they could hit this share document right here and send you that link. If, if for some reason they're, that's not there or they're having an issue. Is that good? Okay. Um, so there, there are multiple ways to do it. Um, but yeah, so they could, they could do it that way. Well, they could send you that link. Put in a private comment or something like that. Um, all right, so what are we, oh, and we're digging into, we were diving in, let me talk about these buttons up here and then we're diving into if what where students could go to find their work if it if it disappears. Um, I just showed you that the little um, I don't know what to call those little dots the corner the the top right the sharing um, right here you do see that link. Anyone with the link editor? Let me when he said it. This is this might be a way you could get like a signature. Um, it wouldn't be as easy as people just being able to sign like if they had they would have to like just be able to type or something. But um, Anyone with a link editor, here are your download print permissions. Um, and it's this button right here. All of this also is on the slide deck. I've got images and labels with all this stuff. Um, if you want to download something, if you're still have a, if you're a person that likes that things on your computer, that is fine. Um, Cami, I think it's the most friendly for things, people who have things on their computer, on their home drive, I mean. Um, and see, I can save it to all these different places right here. So for those of you who like to keep things on your H drive, that is perfectly fine. Um, this is the one for you. All right, so we were talking. Um, Miss Knight was in my, my, um, my session earlier, and she was talking about issues she's having um, with students submitting work um, and it, it not showing up. So I have Cami uploads and Cami assignments. That's already in my drive. Um, once students start using Cami, this will be there. Um, and I can, you know, if I've connected, if they've connected it with their drive or use it in any way with Google, um, these files will be there. So if they say they submitted it, um right it you if they go back and they say my work disappeared um they can go back into their drive to this folder and they'll be able to see it this night that is what we're talking about so if they're yes, saying they have some that's issues, exactly yeah, okay. what that's exactly what the lady on the forum was saying is that they can go back to their um Google Drive and be able to pull it up from there and start over or start start where wherever it quote unquote disappeared from. Perfect. Exactly. Um, so I, you know, and I know things like glitches, technology isn't perfect at all. We all have to have a backup plan. So just when students will, they'll see those folders in their Google Drive. Now their Google Drive, they're messes. They are messes. So, um, so it had to end up being a long, teachable moment about why you should keep your files organized. Um, and thanks, Ms. Mosby. That is also uh, a great way students can can just share that link to submit assignments as well. Like they could go in, attach this file. You can um, also find it with the recent, looking up your recent documents. Bam. Yes, yes, perfect. Tell her on fire day. It's like my best candy session ever. Um, so. I, once again, I, on this slide deck, I'll drop the link in the chat. I have like all the different symbols, just in case, you know, but you can click on it. It's it's not, 
one of those things they're going to click on the one thing and it's going to break. And there is a big undo button. Um, I've got GIF. Um, I don't necessarily love four to a page. I have this more for like your use. Like if you want to show kids how to do text to speech, you could just copy this GIF and put it there. Um, I, I wouldn't normally put four on a page. This is more for you um, than anything. Like if you want to share with your students, this is how you do it. You don't have to make your own GIF. Um, so feel free to just take those. Um, Cami, like I said, got some really cool, there's just the different subjects, how you might want to use it. I feel like everybody here is all over it. Um, and then if you're interested, you know, everybody likes a good badge. Um, you can become a Cami certified educator and they give you this little cute little puppy badge. Um, and it, it's pretty simple. Um, but you do walk through like some, like a, you have to go through a little academy, like some training. Um, and so it's nice. Thanks so much for joining me for Cami in the ESS classroom. Reach out to me if you have any questions in the future and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.